Hey, welcome to Flutter Canvas Tutorials. Another year is coming to an end and I thought it would be fun to create a timeline and plot some events on it. It looks like this. You can drag the timeline and it is infinitely scrollable. Also, you can put events on the timeline and they move along with it. So in this video, you will learn how to draw vertical text, handle gestures, draw on a draggable canvas, and how to paint a linear gradient. If you'd like to know how to create this purely on the Flutter canvas, keep watching. I will go through the code and describe how this can be done. First, let's look at the main dart file. First, we set the device's preferred orientation to landscape. And my app class looks standard. What we should note here is the timeline widget we will create. Actually, we have already created, but I will describe it. Timeline widget is a stateful widget, and it looks like this. Let's look at the build method. So over here, we are generating some data. I will get into that later. But thing to note here is that we just have a custom paint object as a child, and then we have wrapped this inside a gesture detector. Uh, because we want to handle gestures, like dragging back and forth. This is all inside a conta uh, container. We will see how gestures are handled later, but first thing to note is that the custom painter object, which is the timeline painter, um, has a few parameters. Start date, end date, and some data. So, in most basic terms, what we want to do is to just draw months from the start to end horizontally, like this. Our Timeline Painter is an immutable class, meaning the data that is passed in here won't change. All we do is to use the data to draw something. There's a lot going on in here, but let's take one thing at a time. So let's look at the paint method. It's down below here. There we are. There are four main things that happens in, uh, in this method. So first thing to do is to draw the background shading. We draw the background with alternating colors for odd and even ears. And also we draw the ear uh, on the background in big letters, as you can see here. And then we draw the months, which are down below over here with vertical text and then there is some uh, little vertical line as well and finally we draw the data card which has all the data a series of data and some descriptions as mentioned here timeline painter does not worry about gestures or dragging or anything else it just draws things all it needs is a start date and date and some data. First, let's see how we can draw the months because with that we get some orientation. I'm going to comment out everything else so it is clear and then jump into draw months method. So I'm going to comment out these bits. Okay. So we're just going to go ahead and draw the month and then the vertical lines, uh, as you can see here. Right. Draw months function looks a bit busy, but we loop over the month from start date to end date. And then we draw the month name, vertical text, and then draw a vertical line. And then at the bottom here, we are updating uh, various variables so that it gets to the next month. For example, if you are in December, then the year has to be incremented and the month has to be set to January. Up top over here, we have the position variable. Uh, the year month date comes from the start date. And then we create the date, uh, new date object with the year and the month and perhaps we could just use the year from here and the month from here but that's 
up to you. Let's take a look at what draw text vertical does. Okay, so in this, uh, we are doing a simple transformation. First thing to do is to save the canvas and then restore at the, at the end. And we gonna translate to the position that we want to draw. So basically, we draw the canvas, sorry, we draw the text on the canvas at the origin, which is set right here. Canvas, zero, zero, some text and so, uh, some style. So the zero, zero would be somewhere here. So it would be drawn just as normal um, horizontally somewhere here. But since we want to have that drawn over here, we translate the canvas to position dx and dy, which is somewhere down here. And then we rotate the canvas by minus 90 degrees. So when we do that, it would appear vertical. The draw text function is very simple. I have described how to draw text earlier. Uh, so it, it's a matter of creating a text span and a text painter. Uh, that would do the measuring because we do the layout and then paint text, just paint the text at a given point. If you'd like to know how to draw text, uh, please take a look at the previous videos I created on this subject. But over here, it's just a matter of using these functions over again. So draw text uh, has a measure text, which returns a text painter object, and then we call the paint text. So we are very clear on what we are doing. It's all small functions that we compose. Okay, let's get back to where we were and then take a look at how we draw a vertical line. So the first thing to note here is that we have some variable called block w. Let's take a look at what it is. It is passed in from the paint method. Block w means that we are dividing the screen into equal 12 blocks for each of the month. We're gonna display 12 months over here. Uh, and this computation over here, I'll get to that. This comes into play when you have to worry about the start date does not start at the first of the month. So let's say if the start date starts at um, 15th of the month, then you have to uh, compute the fraction. So I'll get to that later. So basically what happens here is that you just get the block W passed in. And for each of the, sorry, over here. So we know which month it is because we are counting here and then incrementing that for each of the month. Uh, that is the starting position, P1 to P2. So something like uh, X over here and uh, Y is the star, uh, size height because we're gonna draw from zero, zero would be here and the height would be uh, over here. So the uh, line that we start from is from the bottom to something a little bit uh, less than the bottom that is given by minus H. So when we increment uh, M in this loop, it goes from the block size to block size. So that's how we draw uh, the vertical line. Over here, I am um, incrementing the position of the text uh, with some padding and also X start that comes into play when the start of the month is not at the first of that month. Okay, so that's the draw month method. Okay, so let's take a look at the paint again. Let me explain this bit here about the start date not starting on the first of that month. Block W is the width of each month. Each, uh, each month can have various different number of days. Days in month computes the number of days in the start dates month. 
and the fraction gives the fractional offset of the day. So for example, if the month is January and the start day's day is 5th, then this fraction gives 5 over 31. We can use this fraction to measure where we should start during the month, uh, which is off screen. So that's why there's a minus over here. So that done, let's take a look at how to draw alternating background colors. So I'm going to enable this part and then let's go into that. Okay. So we are in the draw background shading method. Few things are happening over here, but mainly what we should note here is that we are drawing two rectangles. One for the first year and the next for the following year. Uh, we compute the starting and the ending positions over here. Let's take a look at MM1. So it starts from the month, uh, which is the start date's month, which could be uh, something like February or uh, April. So we have to compute the correct offset and from there on, the end is 12 months. So that's why we add 12 over here. Um, so the next thing to note is that we set a background depending on if that year is even or odd. And it's this is for the first year that we're gonna draw. And this is for the second year uh, or the following year that we're gonna draw. So for example, 2020 is an even year and also it's a weird year but that's another story we will tell that story in the data card okay so now let's go ahead and draw the year in big letters so i'm going to enable this function draw year on background that's okay it's on there so let me show you know the background shading as well as the uh, the text over here draw year on background method looks like this so we get the year and month and then as before we compute the m1 mm1 and mm2 um, and then we draw the text on the first year and the subsequent year we are using the same draw text function that we used before so we are reusing that only thing is that we are using a uh, different text style. Yeah, it's very simple. Now we get to the more interesting part. This is where we draw the event data. Let me show you the structure of the event data first. They are in the data.dot. Here in the data.dart file, I have described several classes to contain the data. First, look at the data card class. So it has a name and a list of data series, a start date and end date. Okay, so the next thing to note is the data series class. Uh, this describes a list of events and the metadata it contains are the name, description if they are textual data a name could be for uh, numeric data as well um, but minimum value maximum value these are these are things that uh, can be computed from the data item and the plot type describes how this series should be drawn let's take a look at what the data item class uh, describe so it has a timestamp this is a essential part of the data item class because without that you cannot put that onto a um, timeline and then depending on if it is a numeric or textual you can set either the value or the name you can set both but um, that's what these fields are for but the plot type over here i describe how the data should be drawn the originator of the data knows how this should be drawn that's why it is set up over here. Now that we know the structure of how data is represented, let's take a look at uh, the data generation function I've used here. I found this data set online about the 
world events mostly in 2020 such a fantastic year there's a lot happened in this year i've extracted a few things that are noteworthy uh, it is in this list here we called um, world events basically this is a list of dictionaries i've structured out of a json data set um, first we create the data card to initialize it so let's go back to the uh, generate world events function uh, we create a data card and then we initialize this and then i iterate over the world events and for each of these events i'm creating a data series so that's how i uh, how i represent a time period uh, each of um, the series will have two events attached to it uh, that is the time from and the time to so those are added to the uh, data series object and I said the name uh, how it should be plotted a description I'm not using it but that's there anyway uh, data items this is where I said the data items over here okay and then after all that I add the data series into the series list and then return the data card so if I look at uh, the timeline widget this is where I generate the events outside the painter canvas and then I pass that into the time timeline painter so now let's look at our draw card method right so that looks like that let me draw it okay so let's go in there um, Three main things happen in this method. First, we draw each of the series in the data. Over here. Um, and then we draw the border around the card. And then we draw a title. That's what happens in this, uh, in this method. Depending on the plot type, I call a different draw function for each of the series. For example, let's take a look at draw time period. For time period data, uh, the series has two data points, start and end, these two things. So here we compute the left and the right of the rectangle positions to represent that. So what happens is that a time duration or a time period has a starting date, which is the timestamp of the item one, and the ending date, which is the time uh, timestamp of the item two. And we compute the left and the right of uh, each of the each of the rectangles. So that's that's what happens here. Here I'm creating the rectangle with those two variables. X1 is the left, X2 is the right. So this should draw just draw the uh, horizontal rectangles so this part over here is to set up the linear gradient if i just comment that out then this is what it looks like it just draws dark rectangles so uh let me describe what happens in here so we just draw the draw uh, rectangle and then uh, draw the text that describe this uh, time period. The first thing I do, I do over here is that I get the text from the series name and then set up the style and this gives me a text painter object which is already uh, laid out so I can compute the the size of the text. Since I want to place the text inside this rectangle but centered inside this rectangle uh, I will do this computation and it's a matter of um, painting the text after that. So that's that. Uh, let's take a look at the linear gradient. It is very, very easy actually. So over here, what I have is a rect paint, it's a paint object. And then I use the shader to attach the linear gradient converted to a uh, shader. Uh, linear gradient start with the begin and end. This shows where the shading should start. For example, if it is in the in a corner, and then we have 
um, stops array and the colors array. These two should have the same length. The stops represent the gradient extent from zero to one. Zero being the start, one being the end. Here I say at distance 0.5, the color should be the first. And uh, at distance one, the color should be the second. Then the linear gradient figures out the colors in between. In all these computations, our anchor is the star date, which has the horizontal pixel zero. So with that, we can compute all the positions uh, of these uh, time elements. Now let's take a look at handling gestures. This is very easy. In the timeline widget, the custom paint object is wrapped inside um, gesture detector object. And we attach the callback horizontal drag update to the horizontal drag update event, right? What we do here is to increment or decrement the start and end variables, depending on which way we are dragging. So that's what's happening here. And it has to be inside a set state uh, so that when these things update, the canvas is repainted over here. So that's all there is to it. I hope you learned something and enjoyed the video. Uh, this is the 30th video I created for this channel. Um, I started it as an experiment during the lockdown back in May this year. It has been a fun experiment, learning to create and produce videos. It takes a full day for me to create a video from start to finish, so I hope it's all worth it. In the next year, I'm planning to start a Twitch channel so I can answer your questions in a more meaningful and timely manner. I will let you know the details soon. Thanks for all the viewers uh, for watching my creations and providing good feedback and encouragement. Wishing you an awesome 2021. Mostly, it doesn't matter what happens to you. What matters is how you react to it. Until next time.